Take your Bibles to Psalms 27. Psalm 27. I, I, the Lord gave me this thought, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to admit this at the beginning of just being a scaredy cat of the story that I experienced. It was last week, and I was... Have you guys ever been in a, a dead sleep? I mean, you're just conked out, and you're, you're, you're sleeping well, and all of a sudden you hear a loud crash in the house. Have you ever done that? You wake up, and, and I, I sprung out of bed. I mean, I just, it wasn't just one of those, uh, what was that? I mean, I woke up, and I leaned forward, and my heart was racing, and I don't know what it was. So I don't know if somebody is downstairs. I don't know, and all my kids' lights were out. They, they didn't move and things, and I'm, I'm, I'm just laying, sitting on the edge of my bed, and I am just scared to death. And I'm just being honest, and you're thinking, well, aren't you a man, and don't you, I, I am, I'm, yeah, I'm all of the above, and I was just, I was scared, and, and I thought I should wake up Jenny, and I said, well, it's not like I'm going to send her downstairs, or she's going to be like, go check on it, and so I'm, I'm laying there, and then I thought, you know what, if they're in the house, I'm going to lay here, and if somebody broke into my house, all I have to do is wait for more noise, you know, and so they're going to think that I fell back asleep, or everything's okay, and do that, so then I thought, well, that's exactly what they want. They want me to think that everything's okay so that I'll fall back asleep. And, and you know what? You guys can laugh, but my mind was racing a mile a minute. I'm thinking I'm going to die. My whole family's going to die. I'm, I'm going to go back to sleep and I'm going to regret this. And people are going to say, did you not know? And I'm going to be like, no, I woke up, heard it, went back to sleep. And you didn't care about your family. And I, I was just, I was tortured, honestly. And as I laid there, all I could think is the worst. All I could do is think of the worst. And then I started thinking of all these news things that we went on. And uh, Chris Andrews had a, a friend of his uh, that he went to school with, that, that the pastor, and you guys saw that on the news. And, and um, she, she was broke into why her husband left to go work out at the gym at like early in the morning, came in, and it was, it was a bad situation, and shot her. And he came home to this situation. And it's just, it's a messed up world that we live in. But here's what I have found out lately that I've heard amongst myself, uh, even, even amongst our staff and people of the church, this world scares me. I'm afraid. I, 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 I'm worried about going out and I don't want to do this. And I, you know, we double check our doors and all that. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be cautious, but God has not given us a spirit of fear. And, and I thought is if fear is a powerful tool and we know that. I mean, think about the Halloween season that we just went through. People pay to go to these haunted houses to be scared over rubber masks and props, knowing that every bit of it is fake, but it still messes with your mind to make you scream and yell and people go from room to room. And you say, I, I know it's, it's not real. I know that it's fake. Whether you know it's real or not, it still messes with your mind, messes with your emotions, it messes with your feelings. You don't have to turn to this, but I, I did a series a while back and in Ephesians 6, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles are the tactics of the devil. Now, when you think of the tactics, you think of drugs and jealousy and greed and hate and all this other stuff. Do you realize that one of his greatest tools against us is fear? He, he, can, he can mess with you. He can get you not to witness to somebody and not to try something, not to apply for a job, not to ask a girl out or a guy out, not to all, all these things because we live in fear. And it's all made up in our minds. Usually it's not the reality of whatever it is. It's a tactic. Of the devil. And, and, and don't get me wrong. When you see these uh, mass shootings and terrorist attacks and things like that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be smart. I'm still going to go down to my door and check every lock before I go to bed. And I'm still going to do those things. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm worried about my kids. And I want to make sure that I'm asking them, where are you going? Who are you going to be with? I'm not saying that we shouldn't walk in wisdom. But I am saying that we should not live in fear. Fear should not control us because God has not given it to us. So I ask you, if God has not given us a spirit of fear, where does it come from? It comes from Satan. It's an, it's an attack of Satan. It's a tool of Satan. In Psalm 27, verse 1, and I'll be short. I know that I am coming behind the kids program and things, and 
I, I love it if we come to church and we have the time that we're going to sit down and read Scripture and have God speak to us. But he said in Psalm 27, 1, and you, you tell me what was on his mind because he repeats this twice. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David was addressing fear twice. He mentions being afraid and, and, and being fearful. What, what was he dealing with? Well, the statement kind of gives it away. I'll just look at two quick points. Number one, exposing the fear that we face. And you just call it what it is. It is not of God. And, and I know people right now that they have completely changed their life because they've allowed a circumstance or a thing or a story or something to come in their life and completely change their life because of fear. A trick, something that Satan has used. And it is, fear is spiritual warfare, which means that it's, it's not something you can see. It gets in your mind. It's like me laying in bed and I'm sitting there and my heart is literally racing. Over what? A loofah fell in our, in our bathroom. It was the little spongy thing that was on the, the wall that fell, but it made a, you know, clanked and fell all over the place. And by the time I woke up, I didn't know that. But that, that one little thing that just planted in my head made me think that there was a terrorist busting in my door or, you know, a group of hoodlums going to rob my family. And we all live with this. When we were kids, it was, it was simple things. And you would walk in there and your kids would say, oh, I saw the shadow or whatever. And you say, hey, listen, that's not what you think it is. It's okay. Go back to sleep. And here you are worried about your job, worried about your health, worried about your parents. It's, it's not even the reality. It's, it's what we think the reality could be that consumes us. I, I came across this and thinking that the devil uses this. Fear, fear can be defined as a device that the devil uses, but it can also be defined as us simply not trusting in God. You don't have to turn there. Let me read this in Psalm 54, verse 4. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they many that fight against me. O thou most high, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Literally meaning, David was saying, when I face that fear of having to let my kids go and not knowing how they're going to do when I send them off to college or whatever. Lord, in that, in that situation, Lord, I'm going to step back and I'm going to trust you with that. It, it means that word trust means to lean or rely on you, God. The closest that I've gotten, Jen, who's been on the other side of this a bunch of times, but this past summer, Jen was leaving to Dominican Republic, and she's going over to the work with these ladies that have been pulled out of sex trafficking, and those that were, I mean, all this horrible situation, and I'm sitting there giving my wife a kiss and putting her on this plane, and my mind is going, man, what if something happened? What if the plane goes down? What, if, what would I do? It's rough being a week with your kids. I mean, it's like... <laughs> Every day, and I'm just thinking, that wasn't the only reason why I was concerned, but, but your mind wanders. You send your kids off to college, and, and you're worried about every second of them. We, we, we dropped my son off at, at just camp for a week, and, and my heart was breaking. What, what if he needs me in all this? And our hearts race in those things, and fear kicks in, and we stop leaning on God. We stop thinking about God. We stop trusting in God. And David said, in the time that I am afraid, I will lean on you, God. Here's the thing. I'm not saying that I should not have gotten out of bed when that, when that happened or anything like that. But what, what I did is I allowed my mind to take control of my feelings and emotions. So we go from examining fear to eliminating fear. You say, how can you do that? Well, if God's given us this warfare to combat it, then, then he's instructing us. Now, in Psalm 1, he did address that he was exposing the fear in his life. But, in his life, but listen to the two things that he says. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? See, David was not a superman. He was like anybody else. He got in the situations that he was afraid. But look at how he does this. And, and like this morning, I, I pointed out in the service about how, about Jesus being the most high. Every one of these names of God is very descriptive to the situation. And right here he calls God my light. Going back to my chicken story. So I'm laying there. And uh, guys, don't make fun of me. I, I didn't know what to do. I, I promise you. I, I was so, my heart was racing. 
So finally I realized I could not go back to sleep. There was no going back to sleep. So I got up and I was, I was walking through the house and I decided I just stood at the top of the steps and I flipped one switch on and then I went through the whole house and I switched every, the whole house went up in the middle of the night. And uh, I, I got up and I didn't know, I, I didn't know if I should grab my gun, I didn't know what I should do, so these were the only two guns I brought with me, okay? And Obama can do what he wants, but he's not taking these bad boys, okay? It's just... There's no locking these up, so I don't know if that would have helped me or not because I was pretty scared. But uh, I I eventually went through the entire house, I mean, one room at a time, and if my family would have woke up, they would have just laughed at me because literally every light in the house was on. And then I felt good and I went back to bed. And you, you say, what was it? See, fear is a manipulation of the truth. It is, fear, fear is the, the fear of the unknown or not knowing what's there. And, and I love how God exposes the truth. He, and remember, this is not an outward thing. It's not a matter of God turning around the lights in our house or whatever and exposing it. But it is a good illustration. When I could see that everything was okay, it made my heart be at rest. And what God does is the truth of God's word, when he says, I am your shield and I am this and I will never leave you and I'll go before you and I stand behind you and I, I, I'm all around you and all these promises of God, that is the word of God is a light. It, it illuminates, it shows me and it brings peace to the situation. That's what God does. God exposes the truth. He lets me know that he's there. He lets me know what I'm afraid of. The Lord is my light and he is my salvation. That word salvation means deliverance or safety. I'm going I'm to tell you guys right now, that is powerful of what David said. The Lord is my safety or he is my safe place. He's where I go to or what I cling to as I'm laying there. Now, <clears throat> as we lay in bed, we have one or two things that we can do. We can either let our minds run with the idea of what we saw on the news, or what we heard from the neighbor, or what, you know, and crazy talk about everybody's talking about all these things as you see a report and terrorists and them coming into our country and all this other stuff. It's just like, you could live in constant fear. Or you can lay in bed and do the opposite. Rather than your mind running with that, you sit there and say, you know what, Lord, you have never left me. You, you've been there through every person that I've ever known that has ever called out the name of God. You were there for everybody in the Bible. Lord, you've been there through my life. You're there with my kids. I've seen, and I promise you, the more that you start calling out God, he puts you in that safe place. Verse 5, from my time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. David is just describing how he felt. That's what David is doing. He said, when I felt that way, it it just felt like God put me at peace. When God exposes the truth, that's what he does. He puts his hand of peace upon us. I'm giving you guys the example before of Morgan. Morgan's bedroom is is right next to our bedroom. And just like any other kid, when uh, you hear a thunderstorm or something like that, or the, the wind blowing really hard a couple weeks ago, we had a storm that went through it. It was just wind, there was no rain, but I remember it literally looked, sounded like it was blowing the siding off the side of the house. It just was like, it was horrible. I was expecting just to find a mess the next day. And I remember the, the way that it sounded and everything, and, and Morgan came to my room, and I wasn't surprised just because of the sound of it. And she laid next to me, and I, I let her put, uh, lay next to me, and I put my arm around her, and I, her heart was racing, and And I started thinking about what God does with that. When he puts us, when he puts his arms around us, it's that place, that feeling of security that he calms us. He puts his peace or his presence there. It's not you having a knowledge that God can. Every bit of this illustration is about you going to God to be in the relationship with God. I'm going to close with this passage that illustrates this. In 1 John 4, 17, Herein is our love made perfect or complete. That we have boldness in the day of judgment because it, so as he is, so we are in this world. There is no fear in love. Now listen to this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love hath cast out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth not is made perfect in love. We love him. Now listen to this. How this is, 
We love Him. We have this relationship with Him. And on this side of it, we're talking about fear and overcoming fear and casting out fear. Do you guys see that both of those go hand in hand? The antidote for your fear is your relationship with your God. You, 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 you don't trust God, you're not going to lean on God. You don't have that fellowship with God, you're not going to feel the presence of God. It wasn't Morgan in there saying, my dad's in the next room, I know that. I, I don't know what that noise is outside, I don't know if that's a tornado, I don't know if the house is falling, I don't know, but I, I'm sure it's okay. No, Morgan went to her father to be in the presence of her father. I did not change the situation. I did not make the wind stop. I did not make the noise stop outside. But what she did was she, clung, she, she was clinging to the one that she knew gave her peace. Where do you get your peace? And I know this is crazy. Do, do yourself, sleep well tonight. Don't turn, don't turn on the news tonight. All you're going to get is a bunch of garbage because the relationship that you have with God when you sit down with your father, just like it says, we love him because he first loved us. There is no fear in that agape, unconditional love. When the Father wraps His arms around you, it casts out fear. And it, it's unexplainable. But that is the peace of God. That is the presence of God with us. And I, I, I can tell you this. There are Christians that love God and go to church and will sing the songs about how great God is. But we're living in fear. Fear, fear of what's happening in our nation or fear what's happening overseas or fear what's going to happen in 2016 with all the election and changes, fear of all these things. But God hasn't given it to us. If, if we're going to stand and we're going to be the Christians that we ought to be, how dare we sit there and call out all these sins and say these things are bad and wicked and God says, yeah, but you live in fear of your kids, of your future, of your finances, of what's coming next. Next. 